I'm a proponent of having a nice bike if you can afford it and you think it's a valuable use of your money. The problem with nice bikes is that they can be so nice that they stop being fun and they stop being useful. This is the dark side of nice bikes. <laughs> What's up, I'm Zach Alardo. Life is short, but don't make it shorter, so ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous. Subscribe for more fixed gear videos just like this one. I'll be expanding on Bike Snob's ideas in his book, Bike Snob. It's a good read if you're also a bike nerd, and you can get it from the affiliate link in the description that directly supports the channel, so feel free to check it out at any point during this video. Before you jump to the conclusions and leave a comment after only reading the title, <coughs> let me make it clear that this is just my opinion. If you have a different opinion, great. Watch the entire video and let me know in the comments so we can have a discussion. And let me say that yes, I do own a nice bike, I love riding my nice bike, and I'm very thankful that I get to own and ride a nice bike. They're more reliable, they have a nicer ride quality that encourages you to ride more, and if you really love cycling, you can appreciate the feeling of owning a nice bike. Nice bikes aren't inherently bad, but owning one isn't all corgis in a handbasket. And speaking from experience, it comes with its own set of problems. Riding a nice bike can spoil you, high-end components are stiffer, prettier, and oftentimes a lot more reliable. Once you start riding nice components, it can be really difficult to ever go back to riding mid-range or entry-level components. After riding Omniums and 75s for a few years, I decided to give the Andal Standard Track cranks set a whirl. These cranks are an amazing value for the price. They were just as stiff as my Sugino 75s, and they had a more durable bottom bracket than my Omniums. When all is said and done, buying the cranks, the bottom brackets, and the chain rings, the Andal Standard Tracks are $50 cheaper than the Omniums, and more reliable, and they're just just as stiff as the 75s, while being only half as much. As great as the Ando cranks were, I just couldn't stick with them. Nice components spoiled me, and I became a bike elitist. As much as I don't like to admit it, I liked the look of my 75s a lot better. And I like that the 75s say to other fixed gear riders that I'm experienced and that I know my stuff. As silly as it sounds, high-end components became a status symbol for me, and I liked it. It may be irrational, but I developed an emotional attachment to my higher-end components and I now have a hard time accepting anything less for my personal bikes. 130 BCD cranks are so pedestrian. I deserve only the best 144 BCD track specific crank sets. And let the expensive stuff turn me into a bike snob. When you upgrade to a nicer component, whether it actually performs better or whether you're just upgrading for a nicer logo, it can lead to a series of upgrades for the rest of your build that can bleed out your wallets if you're not mindful. This is the upgrade bug. When this happened to my Brooks Cambium, the most comfortable saddle that I've used for long rides by far, my choices for a replacement saddle was Brooks or Brooks. Then I thought while I'm replacing the saddle, I might as well get some more comfortable handlebars, hence the townie bars. But I couldn't just get any townie bars, I had to get Fancy Pants high-end heat-treated Japanese Nitto townie bars. My new townie bars then needed a new stem with a longer length so the bars would fit me correctly, but connecting my Nittos to a budget stem felt like a shame. So I had to get a Thompson to do it justice. And the plastic bar ends that I've been using for years felt out of place on the Nittos, so why not replace them with Fancy Pants matching Nitto bar ends? And the upgrade bug that started with a Brooks saddle replacement somehow turned me into a Nitto fanboy overnight. To put this into perspective, I was upgrading a bike that I already sank $1,300 into as a spaghetti and ragu eating student, no less. When I originally built it, I told myself that my bike was complete. As Bike Snob says in his book, it doesn't matter if you spend $100 or $1,000 on your bike, you're going to want to upgrade it. It's human nature to always be on the lookout for something better, regardless if we need it or not. The upgrade bug confuses our wants with our needs. We think we need a Brooks saddle and heat-treated Japanese Nitto bars, but these are luxuries. The problem is thinking that you need these luxuries when you actually just want them in order to enjoy your bike a little bit more. To stop the upgrade bug from sucking your wallet dry, always check with yourself before purchasing. One, is this something that I want or that I need? Two, can I afford it? With that said, when I was building a Ricky while sharing a two-bedroom apartment with four other people and roaches to boot, man, college sucks, I have no regrets since that same passion that led me to build up a bike that I couldn't afford has led me to where I am today, where I can help other people get excited about riding. So the moral of the story is sometimes stupid decisions can lead to great outcomes. Over-attachment to a bike is on the more extreme end of owning a nice bike. Heck, I named mine and I talked to it like it's a person and I know I'm not alone, right Ricky?
If people become over attached to their nice bikes, they can start babying them and stop using them. They clean it obsessively in the driveway, they never lock it up in fear that it'll get scratched at the rack, and they'll yell at you if you touch it without their permission. And don't even think about asking you to ride it because, you fool, this is the bike that Eddie Merckx rode to set the world hour record in 1972. And you don't understand how important this bike is because you don't even know who Eddie Merckx is, Susan. Poor Susan. The overattachment of owning a nice bike can defeat the purpose of owning a nice bike in the first place. Most people build nice bikes because they enjoy cycling and want to enjoy riding even more. Having a smoother running, beautiful, bomb-proof bike helps to accomplish that goal. But once people become overattached to their bikes, it stops being useful and starts dictating how and when they should ride their bikes. People are supposed to own their possessions, not the other way around. Bikes are supposed to give you freedom and be fun to ride. They're supposed to get scratched. They're supposed to be ridden in the rain and get a little bit rusty. They're supposed to be used and enjoyed. When the fear of something even mildly bad happening to the bike overcomes the joy of owning it, the bike becomes useless no matter how nice it is. Be thankful for what you get to ride, because if you're not, it's all too easy to focus on what you don't have and become dissatisfied no matter how nice your bike is. Love the ride more than you love the bike. A lot of what I talk about in this video expands from the ideas in Bike Snob. It's a pretty good read, at least a little bit mildly funny, and if you're a bike nerd like me, I think you'll get a kick out of it, and it even has full color pictures of judging other people's bikes just like Fixie Points. Check it out at the link in the description to support the channel. A lot of people ask me what my dream bike is, and and a lot of people get disappointed when they find out that it's what I'm riding right now. If I get a bike any nicer than the one that I have now, I'm afraid that I wouldn't use it to its fullest potential. Question of the day, what is your dream bike? And in your opinion, do you think that there's a such thing as a bike that is too nice? Let me know in the comments. Fixie famous shout out to Mikey Simcox, Jazeel, Mark Vandeventer, Evil Ernie, and Zarella01 for making these videos possible through their support on Patreon. Don't watch this upcoming video if you haven't ridden your bike yet. Instead, ride your bike every day to be reasonably dangerous.